We're in the high plateaus of Chiapas, a remote region of Mexico forgotten by civilization and the main commercial channels. And yet it's here in just a few years with the support of the coffee merchant Malongo that a small silent revolution began. Fair trade. An economy which calls into question the foundations of the big enterprises and which is due to a fruit, coffee. Every day, nearly one and a half billion cups of coffee are consumed around the world. Number two in production after oil. A planetary stake which is the fruit of a unique speculation. 15 billion euros for the producer countries which share the market. With 40% of the world market, Brazil has made this its number one activity. With mechanizing exploitations with the more resistant varieties. In the end, the coffee will be of lower quality, but high output has its price. Facing up to these coffee giants, the small plantations isolated in the mountains harvest a few kilos a day. A coffee which is very often the only source of income. What's different is that today, the value of the coffee is half what it was 10 years ago. And there's a reason for this. Annual harvest of 115 million bags, world production largely exceeds consumption. Race for output has engendered a sharp drop in prices and in the speculation. For the small farmers who don't have the takings in advance, from now on it's the purchaser who fixes the price. Stars in the villages of Chiapas that the local purchasers, coyotes, take advantage of the distance from the cities to impose their law. A solution to this is found by Father Francesco van der Hoff. For this Dutch worker priest, the life of the Indians should not depend on dubious intermediaries who have everything to gain in maintaining a situation of precariousness. It's essential to find other purchases for the coffee so that the right price will be paid. Father Francesco will thus establish a system which will make the Indians economically independent. So you have to infringe into the market with the different rules with different set of, 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 of agreements by which the consumer knows from, okay, when I buy this coffee, it is ethical sound, an ethical level, and it is a humane sound, and it is organically good for Earth, Mother Earth, etc. Okay, when you have these three ideas, then there is a consumer group which says, from, okay, I go for it. To have financial autonomy, it's necessary to sell at a higher price. Father Francesco has an idea to produce organic coffee. But to sell the coffee at a higher price is not enough. Small producers need regular incomes for the value of the coffee to be constant and to escape the speculators. In fact, a new economic system has to be founded. Father Francesco will do this by connecting the small producers with new actors. In 1988, with the assistance of humanitarian associations, he creates in the Netherlands the Max Havelaar label, a label which guarantees a new kind of business, that of fair trade. For these small producers, the harvest will still be bought at a guaranteed minimum price, 121 cents a pound, even if the market prices fall. To this, the purchaser adds a social differential of 5 cents a pound that the farmers have to reinvest in social projects. But above all, it's the pre-financing of harvests that makes it possible for these cooperatives to develop when they don't have the funds. If the purchaser agrees to reduce his profits, it's also to take part in the improvement of the crop, to have the guarantee of quality. To last, fair trade must not, however, be an economy of charity. The coffee must be a true actor on the distribution market. This diffusion is assured by a coffee merchant, the general manager of Malongo. Jean-Pierre Blanc is a leader in France on the market for top-of-the-range coffee. For 20 years, he's traveled the planet in search of rare coffees. Thanks to him, the small producers will finally have access to a great distribution network. Malongo agrees to reduce its profits and buys their coffee at double the market price while bringing to the label Max Havelaar the means of controlling and maintaining the quality of the product. Jean-Pierre Blanc is also convinced that it's essential to differentiate by playing the quality card. 
What I want to do is to bring to these men and women who live together and who have a passion, which is a passion to make good coffee, my know-how to help them develop this good coffee and to pay a correct price so they can have durable economic development. Quality. This is the true asset of these small producers. An irreproachable coffee. With the Max Havilar label and Malongo, the coffee resulting from fair trade makes its entry on the major retail market. The result today, 35% growth in France. The consumers are ready to pay a little more to have the best.